if you're in the army before a two day, four day, three day, whatever weekend, first sergeant gets you all lined up in a formation. And he says, all right, listen, gentlemen, it's not what he calls you always, but let's just say for video purposes, listen, gentlemen, you're going to go out and you're going to drink and you're going to do a bunch of things this weekend. And you need to be careful. It's going to be cold outside. It's going to be hot outside. Alcohol is going to dehydrate you. You're going to come back to work on Monday and you're not going to be good. You know, you're going to be dehydrated. You're going to be a hot water, uh, hot weather casualty, cold weather casualty, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, I told my guys last Friday they had to work on Saturday. I said, hey, don't go home and get drunk just because it's a Friday. You got to get back to work on Saturday and you want to be able to, you know, if, if the alcohol thins your blood and it's going to be just cold on Saturday, you don't want that to affect your performance, right? Well, I get a little wish-washy on a couple of them here. I'm going to drink because it's Friday night. And that's what I do. Okay, whatever. You know, you're the one that's going to suffer for it on Saturday. I can't hold your hand and make you do something. Okay, enough said. Let's fast forward to this week. Monday, things freeze off. It's really bad. It's life or death. Life or death situations. I'm not even kidding you here. Life or death. People are out drinking. They go out to the store and they buy a bunch of booze and they're going to sit at home and drink. Power's off. You're having trouble heating your house. You're going to have trouble heating your body. Uh, you're stuck in a house with your entire family and you're going to drink. Fast forward to Wednesday, been sitting at home drinking two or three days in your house with your family. You get wore out. I tell you what, I had my feelings hurt. I had someone show up to me, a friend of mine, someone I consider a friend, but also someone that works for me. And again, let me reiterate, I make these videos because I want everyone to hear my story. Because my story is not just my story, it's your story too, because it happens to you. And if it hasn't happened to you, it sure as heck will at some point. So listen up, sit down, take a seat, let's settle in for the ride. We're going to talk about something that's damn serious. Okay. We already established if you're going to be my friend, we're going to have boundaries. We're going to have rules, Okay. That's just what it is. You're gonna, we're gonna have those boundaries. It's not gonna change. Chances are we're gonna do things my way. You gonna be my friend? We're gonna do things my way because I'm trying to do all things the right way. Now, if I misstep and I'm doing something the wrong way, then you line me out, buddy. Line me out. Get me right back on the path. But chances are I'm out there walking the right path. That's why I'm doing this. So that being said. I make these videos, whether or not I call you out or say something that offends you, I make these videos because I'm tired of repeating myself. I'm tired of repeating myself to the same dang person over and over and over again, and they're not listening to me. Now they can go watch this video over and over again so they can understand and let it sink right on in that skull. Now if they don't, if they don't watch it, well, so be it. If you're watching this video, soak it in your skull right now. If this is you, knucklehead, then quit doing it. If it's not you, then share the video with someone that does it. Or soak it in and make sure when it happens to you, you're prepared to handle the situation assertively. Okay? So, a friend of mine, let's get on up close here. A friend of mine, we're locked up in the office for three days. A friend of mine calls me up. One o'clock in the afternoon and says, hey, what are you doing? I'm at the shop. That's what I'm doing. I've been here hanging out, rationing food, trying to survive. He says, I'm going to come up there. I've been drinking. Then he goes, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to come around Jason when I've been drinking. Because everybody knows, don't come around me if you've been drinking. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm not your babysitter. And then he goes, oh, wait a minute. I No, I won't come up there. I've been drinking. Okay. That's what I said. Okay. Get off the phone. About three hours later, that person shows up here at my office. My place of business that I work hard to pay for. Now, that person works for me, and their work pitches in on helping make sure we get this place paid for. We have a warm place to go whenever it freezes, and thank God we still had electric, and I was able to help people. Amazing. What a blessing. Well, you sure don't turn around and take advantage of that. Everyone that's up here, we got rules. We got standards to abide by. We're going to keep it quiet. We're going to hunker down. We're going to ration food, and we're going to survive. We're going to live through this. Well, this guy shows up drunk, 
telling me he's been arguing with his wife all day because he's been drinking. We take a little ride. We have a little talk. He's venting to me about his wife, and then he turns right back around, and he uh, tells me about how he feels like people take advantage of me frequently. And I understand. Now, you need to understand people aren't taking advantage of me because of the kindness of my heart, and I'm not there for mental support, but I'm there for financial support. I love the fact that I can put a man to work to feed his family. And I love the fact that because I'm doing pretty good for myself, that I can take in people and help people when I, when I can. Which is always, to a certain extent. Don't ask me to borrow money. We'll figure out a way for you to make money if you need it. So, comes into the shop. This is after we took a ride. He's telling me about how he wants to be there for me to help make sure people don't take advantage of me. And that's good. That's what a friend's supposed to do. That's a friend and that's family. You make sure nobody takes advantage of me. You make sure that I walk that path to make sure nobody takes advantage of me. Now, that being said, I, I, I'd put myself in that situation because I want to learn from it. It makes me more of a shrewd businessman. If I've got someone taking advantage of me, I'll figure out how to correct it so it doesn't happen moving forward, no matter what the circumstances. But, we get back to the shop, and he, everybody had been up here for two, three days, and uh, they were behaving, and they were doing all the right things they were supposed to be doing, and they were following the rules. Well, he comes in causing a ruckus, because he'd been drinking and been having a bad day. Well, we'd all been having a good day, and we were settling in. It was evening time, it's time for dinner. He comes in here making a big old ruckus, getting everybody out playing, making noise, out making snowball fights. Come in here, we're trying to watch a movie, be quiet, eat our dinner, mind our own business. Because we're in a situation like no other that we'd never seen. We're in survival mode. Well, he's trying to make a party out of it. Push, push party on people. Let's drink a beer. Let's make noise. Let's tear up the shop. Let's traipse water in and out of the shop. Let's just do all these wrong things that we know are breaking the rules. And we don't care about the rules right now. Because we're in a bad situation. No, sir. You stop right then and there. You stop right then and there. We have rules and we have regulations of this place of business. This is not a playground. It will not be treated as such. Even if you come to my house, it's not a playground. I don't drink beer. I don't party. I don't entertain like I used to do when I'd have friends come over and we'd drink beer and we'd act like fools. We don't do that. We keep our minds clear and healthy. And we keep that garbage out because we want to make sure that we don't get domestic situations. And if you get in a domestic situation at home, well, then you don't bring that domestic situation to me because we're going to have a whole new domestic situation. You want to ride around town all day long causing domestic situations everywhere you go? Don't bring that to me. That breaks my heart. That hurts my feelings. That hurts my feelings that you don't respect my friendship enough and the things that I do for you and the things I do for other people that you'd cause a big old ruckus out of it. Now, if it's done out of selfishness, which is what I'm going to be the first to say it's going to be out of, you're having a bad day, you will make sure other people have a bad day. But the fact of the matter is, most people do that uh, uh, subconsciously. They don't even know they're doing it. Well, that's what you're doing, buddy. That's what you're doing. You're dragging everybody around you. You're going to see how many people you can drag into a bad situation. I don't operate that way. I want to make sure everyone has that information, that intelligence in hand to go deal with their situation. Because that's what I'm responsible for. If you're acquainted with me or if you're my friend or you're my family, I'm responsible in some way, shape, or form of making sure that we all do the right thing. I take that upon myself. The reason people take advantage of me is because I put that weight and that burden on my shoulders to make sure that I can take care of people. And if I act a fool like you're requesting me to act a fool, then I will no longer be able to take care of people. It is my responsibility to make sure that people can survive. It is your responsibility to make sure that people can survive. Stop acting a fool. Get sober. Get sober and grow up and be an adult. And let's move forward and progress at being better people every single stinking day.